Okay, so we do need to bring in an if statement here, um, not just yet, but soon. Um, this will ensure that we uh, maintain the same value after we've submitted our form. But once we've included our form, um, then we won't need to worry about it. So we've got our text. Um, what do we need to do next? Well, we need to um, create a variable with our font size. So um, bear in mind this is experimental. So the font size um, depends on obviously what font you're using. So for now, I'm going to set this to a 30, um, but we might want to change it later on. Uh, what we also want to do is set the um, the width of the height and the image. So uh, we'll pull that up here and we'll come down a couple and we'll say, um, let's call the variable image height and image width. We'll start with width. Image width, let's say, um, we'll give it a width of 200. And image height, um, oh, sorry, let's say um, 40 for now. But obviously, we're going to change this around depending on how our text is output and just so we can get a feel of everything, um, the way it works and how it looks. So the next thing is to create the image itself. So let's create a variable called image and we're going to be using the image create function as part of the GD library. And uh, the image create function takes two parameters. This is gonna be the width and the height. So obviously we've already defined this up uh, here. So we just put image width and image height in. Okay, so now we've generated the image and the um, the width and the height of that. We need to allocate a background color and a foreground color. Now, my background color is going to be white. Um, even though we even though we are working with a white background anyway, we still need to define this just so uh, it, it we ensure that it stays white. So um, we use the image color allocate function here, and we use this on our own. We don't set it to any variable, and this ensures it just applies it to the background backdrop of our document or our image rather. Um, so let's go ahead and say uh, image color uh, allocate, and we're allocating this to the image. So we've already opened this image here. We've already created this image. So we're applying it to image. And we specify this in an RGB value. So we've got three integers. Um, this is, for white, this is obviously going to be 255, 255, and 255. Uh, if you already know how to work with RGB values, that's great. You'll know that uh, white is uh, 255, 255, 255, and black is 000, which is what we're going to be doing for our foreground color or our text color. Um, but if you're not sure about these, look them up. Uh, tr try converter if you're used to hexadecimal color values. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et okay, so now with regards to the text color, we need to look at setting this into a variable because what we want to do is when we use this image TTF text function, we need to supply a text color. Whereas we don't need to supply the background color, that's why we've done it without a, um, a variable declaration. So let's create a new variable called text underscore color. And we're going to use the um, image color allocate um, function once again. Uh, and we're applying this to image, but this time we're using 0, 0, 0. So our text color is going to be 0, 0, 0, which is black. Okay, so the next thing to do is we want to use our image TTF text function to ensure that we uh, are outputting the, um, the secure session properly and we're going to preview this from index.php we're not going to preview it from generate.php so let's start with the image ttf uh, text function now it takes a number of parameters so I'll, as we go along I'll explain each one um, or more or less each one the ones that are relevant to us the first one's easy it's just um, the image that we're working with at the moment as we've specified here here um, and that's it so we're just uh, supplying the image that we're working with. Now we want the font size, which we predefined up there, so we can just pop that straight in. Uh, this is the reason we've predefined our variables so they can change dynamically as well. Next is the angle, which we don't need to worry about in this case. And now is the positioning. So I'm going to say 15 from the um, from X, sorry, and fifth and 30 from Y. Um, we can play around with these values. We're going to play around with the font size, the uh, width and the height of the document, and these as well, just so we can get it in the middle of the um, of the little area that we've created. Um, okay, so the next is um, 
the text color. So uh, we've already supplied that in a variable just a moment ago, so we can say text underscore color there. Okay, and now what we want to do is the um, uh, the font file itself. Now I've already created the font file, or rather copied it over from my Windows uh, fonts folder, and I've just I've just called it font.ttf. So make sure you do this. Copy over the font that you want to use. Um, this one's Cali Hand. So um, copy this over from uh, your uh, fonts folder and just put it in the same directory or in another directory and you're going to specify it in this next parameter. So I'm just going to type in font.ttf. Simple. Okay, the next is the text itself because you can probably see we haven't actually defined what text. So we've got the text in a, in a variable up here called text. So we simply just put that in there. And that's done. We've only got one more thing to do and that is use the um, image jpeg function and what this is going to do is going to finalize everything and it's going to write out our image onto this page so it can be displayed as an image so image jpeg image uh, this function can also be used to save the file uh, but in this case we're just outputting it to the page so let's go to index.php um, and let's come under here and create an image um, an image uh, property or element if you like and uh, we're going to reference this to generate.php and the reason we can do this is remember generate.php is now even though it has its PHP extension it's now an image file so hopefully what's going to happen now uh, considering everything in here works or if it does work uh, we're going to view something out um, on our page because we're setting the session here and in the generate.php file we're reading it in here so let's uh, open up our browser and see if this works. Let's go over to index.php. Okay, so it hasn't worked, so we need to work out exactly why it hasn't worked. So let's have a look inside uh, our generate.php file. Um, ah, I know. What we haven't done is, even though we're declaring our session up here, we're starting our session rather, if you like, um, in our generate.php file, we still need to start our session. Um, and the reason for this is that uh, we're accessing session data here as well. And although we're including it in here as an image, it's still regarded as its own file. So remember to include session start at the end of the, at the start of this. So let's go back and refresh. 